Hello and welcome to Community Health Watch. I'm Tiffany Smith, I'll be your host today and I'm filling in for Celia King. Today we'll be talking about eye care, specifically for those of you who wear contact lenses. Uh, joining me today is Dr. David Chu. Dr. Chu, hello, how are you? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank Dr. you for Dr. Chu me. is an ophthalmologist um, at New Jersey Medical School in Newark. And today we're going to be talking about a very serious condition uh, that Dr. Chu knows a lot about. Dr. Chu will be talking about Fusarium keratitis. Dr. Chu, can you tell us what Fusarium keratitis is? Well, Fusarium keratitis is a subset of a, um, a cornea infection. And cornea infection caused by an organism called Fusarium, which is a kind of a fungus. Okay. So if uh, I wear contact lenses, which I do, what does that mean to me? Does that mean I should stop wearing contact lenses? Does that mean that my eyes are in danger? No, it doesn't. Contact lens, uh, in general, is a safe and very effective uh, medical device. And however, as with any other medical device, it requires proper care. And as long as the proper care is uh, administered and um, I think in general people have uh, very little to worry about. Now in the recent days, there's been, in recent months, uh, there have been a outbreak, an outbreak of this particular Fusarium keratitis that uh, some of our national agencies such as CDC and FDA are investigating. Now you were actually responsible for, I guess so to speak, getting the word out about this because I understand you reported uh, one of the first cases, some of the first cases here in New Jersey of the infection, correct? Well, I didn't report the first cases. In fact, I learned about it in February that there were these cases occurring in Southeast Asia, in Singapore and Hong Kong. And when I noticed that these cases are occurring among contact lens users uh, in our area, I uh, try to get more information about them and, and, and that what got uh, CDC's attention. Okay, CDC being the Centers for Disease Control. Correct. Now, yeah. describe what happened when the, the, when the patients came into you. Were their eyes, were they red? Uh, were, they, were they bloodshot? Were they, could they still see or? Right, these infections are not your pink eye type infection. This is, in general, a very painful and very debilitating condition. Patients with So the eye actually hurts. Yes. It's it's you if you have it, you, uh, know, you it. know it. And it's not the kind of thing you think maybe you have it. It doesn't work that way. It's most of these patients just knows that there's something seriously wrong with their eyes. So is it something that happens gradually? So today it might hurt a little, uh, next week it might hurt a little more, then it goes away, then it comes back, or does it just hit you and you just you I have think it? you you like if it hits you, you would know it that day, okay. uh, and it will it will be there until it clears. Okay. Now there are approximately, I think the reports say about 30 million people in this country who wear contact lenses. Mm -hmm. How many cases of this infection um, have you seen this year? Well, among my practice since January, we have recorded over nine cases. Okay. Uh, I say over because. Uh, there are nine cases that are confirmed, uh, and there are uh, several more that have suspicion for this infection, but uh, their condition got better uh, with the alternate treatment, so we don't know for sure that they, the, the organism caused this infection. Okay. Now, in nationally, in our country, uh, CDC's latest report on it was over 100 cases, but this is the tally that they obtained back in April. There have been more n cases than that in in the general public. So I think I've seen some numbers that say close to about, is it close to about maybe 200 now that have been confirmed? Uh, there is no such number that I know of, uh, but I think uh, when everything is said and done, there'll be uh, probably a few to several hundreds. Now, most people probably have not heard of, of Fusarium keratitis, um, but from what I understand from some of the research that I've seen, it is actually something that that people do do get. Correct. correct? Not people just this outbreak isn't just the first time that it happened. 
uh, well, as an, uh, far as outbreak goes, it's a separate story, but people do get infection from fungus uh, as, a, um, uh, as a regular uh, background number of um, uh, conditions. And, and however, what's known about fungus infection on the cornea is that in general it is associated with some sort of infection, not so much with contact lens. So I could get, someone could get an eye fungus such as this even if they don't wear contact lenses? Correct. If the most common cause probably is still uh, injury. Like if, for instance, if you work in the garden with plant material and it brushes on your eye, mm. for instance, and make a, makes a scratch at the same time, sees the cornea with the organism. That's probably more common than, say, um, uh, wearing the contact lens. Okay, yeah. so it's not, so people with contact lenses, ha they have it with this particular outbreak, but you've seen these types of cases in your practice prior Correct. to this. Yes, but in not at this frequency. Okay, so and you've seen nine mm -hmm. since January. Correct. Would you know, say, this time last year, how many you've seen? We actually are doing some studies, and based on our calculate, based on our, our analysis, Prior to this January, uh, for three years, we've observed three cases. Okay, so you've gone from three cases to over three years. Oh, three cases over three years. Correct. Okay. So one a year. So one a year, and so far you've seen nine in half a year. Okay. Why don't people know about this? Why don't do you? I mean, it would seem like they would you hear something on the radio, or you would see something on TV, or. Well, it's um, if it's an outbreak, as you as you say, it's an outbreak. But if we, I said maybe several hundred okay. patients among thirty million contact lenses, it's still not a large number. Not a large number. And um, uh, I'm actually somewhat surprised to date that even uh, as of last uh, few weeks, we still have patients coming in with Who this condition know. where when they where they haven't heard about this particular outbreak. And now there have been some particular products that have been associated with the eye fungus, correct? I understand Correct. renew with moisture lock? Correct. Um, by Bausch and Lomb? There's been uh, extensive analysis on the subject. The question is what, why is this happening and what is the association among these patients besides the fact that they use contact lens? Mm -hmm. and, and it appears that um, a certain brand of contact lens solution may be linked to this. Mm -hmm. And and among our patients, uh, now is, it all just a, is it just the solution, or does it have to do with, say, the cleanser or the eye drops that people might use, or is it just specifically the solution, you think? Well, the going theory, uh, according to some of the um, uh, experts in the field, is that the particular contactless solution made by Bausch & Lomb called uh, Renew with Moisture Lock uh, may have, um, uh, may be prone, uh, user of that solution may be prone to get this infection. Do they know um, why? They have their theories, but these theories come from Bausch & Lomb. And proven. we don't, uh, there's no official report from FDA or the CDC. Now the Bausch & Lomb claims that the solution, uh, because of, of its makeup and the type of uh, disinfectant that's in it, uh, the disinfectant is prone to evaporation, therefore making it, uh, potentially making it less effective. And the polymer-rich nature of the solution may create certain barrier uh, for certain fungus to proliferate. Mm -hmm. And in, in this particular outbreak, uh, it may be related to these, um, these uh, factors that, uh, that the solution um, provides. But probably what makes it even more difficult to understand is that, and, and you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but not all of the cases, not all of the people use the moisture lock, correct? The Bausch & Lomb with, with moisture lock. Were, weren't there some products such as uh, those made by Alcon? Mm -hmm. um, they were, were possibly noted as well? Or? Well, according to the CDC's analysis, uh, which they uh, reported um, uh, um, on uh, on uh, to the public um, several weeks back, the there are 
uh, numerous solutions that the patients with this problem have identified. Based on their statistical analysis, the only product that they felt was significantly linked to this outbreak was Balchian Loam's Renew with Moisture Lock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you think it has anything to do with the, the cleaning method? Because from what I understand, mm -hmm. with the Moisture Lock, um, you don't have to necessarily rub the contact lens as you're cleaning it. You would just basically take the lens out of your eye, put it in that solution, and that would be the cleaning method. Whereas with other types of cleaning methods, when you use con when you wear contact lenses, there's the r the rub and rinse cleaning method, and then you put it in the case, and then you you sterilize it that way. But from what I understand with the Renew with Moisture Lock, it's more of a one-step process, and right. you're just putting it inside of the, there's no rubbing, there's no rinse and rubbing method. Right. There are multiple products out in the market who, which claim uh, that you, that's how you can use the solution. Without rubbing? Without rubbing, okay. yes. For instance, the Renew's uh, Multi Plus, no rub, it says no rub no on rub. it. No rub, okay. And uh, Alcon also makes certain product that says um, uh, no rub required. Uh, this is the dilemma of, of healthcare and quality of life. The, the more convenient the product is, such as in the case of contact lens solution, of course there will be probably more risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, the safest thing, of course, is um, to take uh, proper precaution. And uh, older contact lens cleaning methods, for instance, have um, uh, you have to take it out, rinse it, rub it, rinse it again, mm -hmm. store in the contact lens case with peroxide peroxide system, which uh, will pretty much kill anything. Okay. And then on the next day, you rinse it with some other solution, mm -hmm. and then put it back in your eye. That's but that's you really the gold that. standard okay. of lens care. And when you try to make it convenient for consumers. And that's where um, you, there's where potentially there may be problems. Okay, so you've gone from say a three or four step process mm -hmm. to a one step process, and by doing that, you, you run the risk of maybe having more germs or infections or whatever stay in the case. I P would, potentially, I would that's what happens. So that, that's mm -hmm. the way that works. Okay, but again, <laughs> none of it has been exactly. Uh, proven per, per se that every single person who uses Renew with Moisture Lock is going to have this fungus. Correct. I okay. think, um, I think um, as of now, if you're Renew uh, with Moisture Lock user, it's, 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 um, it's prudent to stop using that particular solution immediately. That's okay. being, it, it has been recommended by FDA. Okay. The Food and Drug Administration is being recommended by manufacturer of the solution, Baoxian Loam. Okay. Uh, and to be careful with, uh, with your lens care practice. Okay. We'll talk more about this in a minute. I'm Tiffany Smith. You're watching Community Health Watch. Today we're talking about contact lenses and the safety of them. We'll be back in a moment. moment. Please join us. What is that thing? Looks like somebody's double chin. Must have lost it snacking on fruits and vegetables. Hmm. <clears throat> Somebody's gonna trip on that. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Community Health Watch. I'm your host, Tiffany Smith, and I am filling in today for Celia King. Today, we're talking about contact lenses and how safe they are. We've specifically been talking about uh, an eye fungus that apparently is, is becoming more prominent uh, around the country. Joining us is Dr. David Chu, an ophthalmologist at New Jersey Medical School. Now, before we took the break, Dr. Chu, you mentioned that uh, part of the problem that they've seen with this eye fungus is that some of the steps that people use to clean their contact lenses have been eliminated and that that increases the chance of having more of uh, a bacteria build mm -hmm. or have the fungus come that sort of thing now is there a difference in uh, 
disposable and the uh, the other contact lenses? Is but, have you seen that or? Um, as of now, uh, what with um, with with our data in particular, and also uh, in um, in the data from other in institutions, the overwhelming majority of people are using disposable contact lenses. Disposable the meaning they wear them for what two weeks, two a weeks, month, um, some thirty days, um, and um, and and. But that's probably because it's the most popular product. Okay. Very few people nowadays are using um, uh, regular so-called daily wear. The contact daily lens wear. That, but are they that the last over? They a last, year. but are they? I would think the extended wear, where you can actually sleep in them. I would think that that would cause you. You would run a risk of developing some sort of eye infection because the the contact lens is in your eye all the time. Correct. So the people who you've seen in your practice, the nine cases that you've seen so far this year, were they wearing the soft contact lenses or the hard? They're all soft contact they're lenses. They're all soft. And they're all using, they were all using disposable contact lenses, okay. but they use it in a way that most uh, ophthalmologists prescribe patients, which is daily wear. Okay. Even with the disposable extended wear contact lens. Meaning taking them out every day. Correct. That's the proper way of, uh, of uh, caring for your lens. Okay. Now, you said this outbreak, um, the nine cases that you've seen, it's not uncommon. Well, it's, it's rare to have this condition. But I've actually seen some of the information that said there were cases reported in New Jersey uh, last summer. But have, was there any sort of public alert to let people know that there, that there is such a danger? or? Um, you mean back in back last year? Last summer. I don't know. I'm not aware of that report. Okay. Uh, but uh, in, this is not the type of condition in general. There's a there's a, any kind of um, agency watching for this type of infection. Okay. At least not until uh, recently. Okay. And and there are people. People get infection from cornea all the time, uh, on their okay. cornea all the time from contact lens. So it's in not fact. like this is the first time. In fact, the the most common cause is uh, bacteria infection, and and it happens very frequently. Now, I understand uh, these type of infections were actually first reported, I guess, more widely reported in Asia in the latter part of last year, and Bausch and Lam actually pulled the Renew with Moisture Lock last November. Correct. Now they pulled it in Asia last November, but it still well, didn't get. They didn't. I don't know what you mean by pull. Pulled it off the market. In right. Asia. They stopped selling. They stopped selling right, it. Right. But they didn't recall it. They also oh, they didn't recall it in Asia no. last year, mm -hmm. but as of now, the product has been completely recalled Correct. around the world. Now, in terms of the manufacturing process. Some of the research that I've seen says that there's been some indication that the Bausch & Lomb manufacturing plant in Greenville, South Carolina, um, has been looked at in terms of the possible site where some of the infection could could possibly have originated. Do you are you aware of that? Or? Sure. Yeah, I am, and I think I, that's the first thing that they looked at. One of the first things to make sure it's not that product was contaminated, okay. and it's. Uh, it's been shown that probably it's not the case. So it wasn't the plan in South Carolina? No. It, that's not the, that the, well, we're not concerned that it's contaminated. Okay. Uh, it's, um, uh, as I mentioned before, probably has to do with the formulation. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about climate. Uh, apparently, people who live in warmer climates, such as Florida, um, aren't as prone to getting these type of eye infections. No, as they're more prone to. They they are. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more prone. Excuse right. me. They're more prone to getting the eye infection in warmer climates, such as Florida, mm -hmm. than people here, say in New Jersey, with which Correct. tends to be cooler climates. Yeah. Why why is that? Well, they well the organism likes to live in warmer climates, and they I think they proliferate uh, much more much more rapidly in uh, in a more temperate uh, weather. In the Northeast, um, for instance, this kind of infection is extremely rare. Okay. In, in, in the South, it, it happens. Because of the warm climate. Yeah. 
Is there it's any? It's in the soil. It's in the plants. Okay, mm -hmm. that's right. You did say that mm -hmm. if you're you're working in your garden and that sort of thing, there's a possibility of getting it that way, even without the contact lens use. Correct. Okay. What about? Um, is there any link to say age or, or, or sex or race or anything like that? Does that? It does not appear to be. I think um, um, the data shows that it can be uh, pretty much anybody who uses contact lenses. Okay. Now the cases, the nine cases that you've seen, um, have your, your patients, have they gotten, most of them have they gotten better, have any um, lost their vision or out of the nine cases that you've seen? Uh, the, some patients have ongoing problems and uh, we're actively treating. Um, most of the patients have recovered from the acute infection and they're, we're trying to recover their vision by means of um, possibly doing surgeries. Okay. So, but has anyone lost their vision? Well, um, of the nine? They, most people have suffered decline in their mm -hmm. baseline state of vision. Okay. But no one has gone like blind in, in one eye? No. They have not. But if you, I guess if if the patient, I guess you can't say that they will not go blind. Well, fungus infection a, of the eye a is a very serious condition, and the chance of losing the eye is is significant. It's it's a real risk if you catch a fungus infection in the eye, and. Um, uh, frequently, they require multiple eye surgeries. Surgeries such as the cornea transplant? Cornea transplant, or? and sometimes people require um, removal of their cataracts because infection will uh, cause cataract. And if the infection spreads into the eye, it may require repeated injection of medicine into the eye. Okay. How safe do you think contacts are at this point? It's a safe product. It, my wife wears it <laughs> and my, uh, I have had a family member who use contact lens. And uh, the important message is that we need to take proper care of it and that um, uh, people have to also be vigilant about uh, uh, their eye condition. If something is not quite right, please seek um, uh, professional opinions. What are some of the safety precautions you mentioned? I mean, I know making sure you wash your hands. Correct. I mean, these are all common sense things, and meaning that if, the, if you've been instructed to replace the contact lens every two weeks, please do so. If you've been uh, told that it needs to be removed every night and it cleaned, uh, please do so. And it needs to be cleaned in a proper way. It needs to be your hand must be, if you're handling contact lens, please make sure your hands are clean. Make sure your contact lenses are clean. And in general, I know it's, a um, consumer likes to buy a large bottle of contact lens. Uh, I would recommend large buying- Large bottle of the solution? Solution, yeah, okay. contact lens solution, sorry. Uh, because it, it goes so longer. Okay. It, you can buy one and last for six months or possibly longer. And that, in general, is not a good idea. Because? It, well, it just risks um, contamination. The longer something is around, the more likely it's going to be contaminated. So if the contact lens is around too long, it has a chance of being contaminated. If the, if the solution is being around for, open for a long time, it will be contaminated. And so it's a contact lens case. It probably should be replaced uh, every one to three months. One um, to three months? Yeah. Cases. Sure. The cases. Mm -hmm. I in fact, my wife replaces her every month. Okay, and you make sure <laughs> that, she, that, that she does that. Correct. What about um, laser surgery? Um, well, let me, let me jump back for a minute. The nine people who've had these cases, do you think that they will go back to wearing contact lenses? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Have any I, said that they will? Um, not that I know of. It's just too pain. It was too it's painful, the experience was. Um, I mean, I, honestly, I can't recall if anybody is already wearing contact lenses now, but... Um, Would it be safe for them to go back, being that they've had such a traumatic experience with their eyes, or...? Uh, yes, it is, and, and, and 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a t doing the contact lens, is, there's certain risk with it. Everything in life has risk, and it has certain risk, and one just takes that if uh, you choose to do something. In terms of um, the laser surgery, I don't know if, if um, that that's necessarily falls into your area, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon with that now, wanting to get the laser surgery because of you know the convenience of not having to wear glasses, mm -hmm. of not having to get you know contacts, and which can be exp get to be expensive in terms of getting the contact lenses, getting the sure. cleaning solutions, getting the saline solution, having to take them out every day, that sort of thing. Laser surgery. Um, how do we know that 10 years from now, we don't see that the billions of people who've had laser surgery don't begin to have a problem with their eyes? I, well, we don't know. Another <laughs> risk, that's, that's it's a, a risk. That's a, that's a good question and that's a question I can't answer. But based on our experience, uh, laser surgeries for cornea has been around for many decades, in fact. and, and it just and seems to be more prominent now. Yeah, it's more popular. It's becoming more mainstream. And um, um, we know that when it's done to proper patients, it's a safe procedure. Proper patients meaning? Well, they have to have uh, a certain uh, criteria that must be fulfilled. Age or health of the eye? Or health of the eye, health of the cornea, um, um, age not so much of a problem, but um, um, uh, these are the kind of things that usually the, the eye doctor goes through with the patient uh, uh, before doing any procedure and to s therefore to select the proper candidate for, for laser procedure because not everybody is a candidate for laser procedure. Because of some of the things that you just sure. mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I, because I, I've talked to some people who were not able to get to get it because of the things you just mentioned in terms of the health of their eye and their doctor just didn't recommend it. Correct. But from what the research shows at this point, it is considered a, a fairly safe surgery. Yes, uh, advancement is being made every, every year uh, in the laser vision correction. Um, and in general, it is a safe procedure. In general, mm -hmm. but I guess it's just like everything else in medicine, it's not necessarily. Right, there's it, nothing that's absolute, absolutely safe. There's okay. no such thing. There's no guarantee. And there's no guarantee in, in medicine, in life. So okay. that's, how, that's the way okay. it is. Dr. Chu, it's been wonderful having you join. join Thank you for join inviting me. Today. me. You've had a, a wealth of information. I wear contact lenses, so I definitely was uh, definitely enlightened by the things that you told us about today. We thank you for joining us. And we also thank you for joining us here on Community Health Watch. Again, I'm Tiffany Smith, and I filled in for Celia King. If you'd like to contact Dr. Chu, you may do so by calling 973 972 2065 or you can log on to www.theuniversityhospital. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.